Welcome back to Ben Luke again to Shipwrecks. Uh, first of all, I need to apologise. I haven't put any videos out for about four weeks now. Um, there's a good reason for that. We've been doing all sorts of other stuff, loads of research uh, and bits and bobs. Um, we've also been away to Alderney to give a, a talk about a shipwreck that we've named over there. Uh, we didn't discover it. We, um, it was discovered in a report, a uh, tidal stream energy report uh, back in 2009. Uh, 2012, we've got the numbers for it, but it took 10 years to dive it. Um, it's diving, sometimes you just don't get the chance to do it. And you can't do everything at once either. So, welcome back. Um, it's a bit blustery today, and it has been for probably the last four weekends. Um, kind of looking forward to get out, but doesn't quite look as nice as it should do, really. Um, still very mild, temperatures still about 15 degrees, and the sun's still out, so it's not raining, which is the first time. Let's have a look at the sea. Couple of like four or five foot rollers coming in here. Problem is the wind is in this direction, which is a south um, south easterly direction, which is horrible for the uh, east coast. Very rarely in that direction, but today we're uh, we've got it in that direction. So you can see there's other boats out. There's ribs out, and there's um, I don't know what that is. It looks like a rodman of some sort, and there's still people running back and forth to Herm. There's a yacht out. Uh, and you probably noticed already there's uh, people messing around in the in the swell at the bathing pools, in the children's pool. See the uh, adults pool, the ladies pool is covered over. So I think we might be better off going up, up that way a little. But it's all up to Keeney. So I've just waved to Keeney, so I'll come up here to Clarence Battery for a little walk. I just wanted to see what it was like. So let's go, let's go diving now. Almost ready to go. So everyone asks about what gloves do you wear? This is what we wear. £7.49 mixed fishing supplies. Always go one size too big so you can take them off easy underwater. But not so big that they flush water. A bit like a, a, bit like a wetsuit. But that's what we use. Got loads of new stuff, look. New reg, new pony bottle. New first stage and second stage. What are we doing today, Richard? What? What are we going to do today? Uh, go out the arbor, probably turn right, go up and down quite a bit, chuck you over, I'll go up and down quite a bit, you'll come up and say flat down on the bottom. <laughs> What's happening with that boat in Havlet? It's like a fishing boat just bobbing around in Havlet. Uh, yeah, well, he, uh, yeah, I don't think he pays more in fees than harbour or boat set. Yeah. Oh, that's gutting, that's a nice boat that. Oh, it is a fairly nice boat. Separate insurance. So just waiting for Matt. He's just late again. He's always late, eh? Don't know why. He's just as excited as us because we haven't been out for a few weeks. Let's go. Zip us up, I'll zip you up.
It'll end up over there, look. Go in the corner. Yeah, right in the corner, smash. <laughs> look at the rope though at the top. It's only cable tied on. Oh my god. I'm getting afraid, look on the creek back. Yeah. Oh. Look how afraid it is. That is knackered. Ooh. Welcome back below the waves. Now I've got out the chaos on the surface and now back in the calm. So this looks like a scallop straight away, but I can already tell it's dead. Something's eating it, probably a starfish. So let's have a check, we've got 49 minutes, no decompression time, it's got loads and loads of time. We're gonna make it one massive long dive for this one because the issue is getting back in the boat. And I wanna only get back in the boat once. Here's our first scallop. They're not the biggest of scallops, um, but we've come in here to the shallow area. Um, it's a bit shallower, so there's slightly less less waves with toxin around the corner, just outside the bathing pools, really. It's actually better than I thought around here. There's quite a few. Most of them are on the side, so we won't take them, but these ones are definitely big enough. So someone's dumped their smalls here at one time. Um, also some of their shocks, shells. So when you take the flesh out of a shell, it's called shocking. And you hear that chain in the background. That's from the mooring of that boat. We're probably maybe 250, 300 meters out from that boat now. And all their moorings, you can steer them rattling in the background. It's quite eerie really because it sounds very close but it's not. Wonder what this is. Ah, it's a steel pipe of some sort, probably a railing of a boat or maybe uh, maybe something for trawl gear or something, maybe they've just chucked it here. So I now know where I am. I'm, but this is the, the trench, this is the higher part of the trench which comes out for the new cable. That links us down to uh, France. There's a nice cuttlefish. Check the colour, it's like dark and now it's gone onto the sand. I think this one is trying to mimic a flatfish. So they do mimic different different things. So he's changed to white now and he's tried making himself look very flat. And there he goes. I'm not going to catch up with him, he's just too quick for me. Let's go back to this trench because uh, what's interesting is. A couple of months ago, a load of spider crabs had molted their shells, all the smaller ones. So they've molted and actually become bigger, um, between 20 and 25% bigger. And this is all the bits and bobs that are left over from it. Now they're all bleached white. Oh, there's another couple of scallops here. That one looks big enough. I think I'll take that one. Yeah, it's big enough. So you can see here all the shells, very white shells. This is... Uh, all the carapaces and all the legs. And there's one here, look, there's one left. Looks like it's just grown, so a couple of new claws, a tiny little claws. So if we carried on following this down, it'd take him down to about 35 meters. And I'm going uh, south easterly at the moment. Or maybe, yeah, I suppose south easterly. And then it'll take a, uh, a turn to my right and down to the south again. Which adds, if I follow it all the way, I could end up in Jersey. Uh, that ain't gonna happen though. Got some scallop to find. Eerie to see it all white and they're ultra delicate. When you touch them, they just break straight away. 
Loads of little fish and loads of tiny snails eating on all this. So, there's another spider crab. And, not sure what this is. Is it a stove? Gas? Or possibly an oil filter? And let's carry on. You'll find scallops like to hide beneath things, so it's something that gives them a bit of cover. There's another one. They're not massive, but they're big enough. They're probably like 10 mil over the minimum, which is good. Loads of bits of fishing gear here, bits of rope, just buried underneath. Probably connected connected to a callisk or something like that. The callisk is a big heavy weight that goes on the, the start of the crab pots if you want to weigh them down a bit better. So, the viz isn't bad at all. In fact, it's very good, uh, considering we've just had three or four weeks of horrible, horrendous wind. And another scallop. It's a decent size one, that one. Yeah, that's worth keeping. Still hear that chain in the background. Must be getting close to the yacht club, boy. That might be the, the chain we can hear now. Really good thing about this is there's loads and loads of small around here. Probably about 10 mil under size for that one. Mm, it's probably close actually. It's the same width as my uh, four fingers which are roughly about 100 mil. So I'll take it. If it's too small, I'll just gauge it and chuck it back. Look at this. Little... That's a dog whelk shell, I think. And uh, it's a tiny little hermit crab inside. Is he 
you going to come out and play and see us? Maybe not. No, I don't think he is. Let's carry on. So the seabed around here is not actually that nice really. It's just sand. But it goes to show that... Oh, something here. Ah, oh, this is a similar piece that we uh, found before. Probably uh, railing of a boat, I reckon. This one could actually be a dive ladder. Who knows? Yeah, just trash. Let's carry on. The problem on the sandy bits as well, you get this like, um, I call it like the, uh, the following smog. So basically, as soon as you kick up a bit of sand, it follows behind you very slowly in the tide. So if you stay still for too long, it'll catch up with you. That one's too small, I can stay there. That's next year's stock. Believe it or not, on the sand like this, they're actually really hard to see compared to on the gravel. The gravel you can see a little bit easier, but in the sand, it's, it's just they're just so well camouflaged. Still got 38 minutes bottom time left. 150 bar of air on a 15 litre. Loads and loads of air left. Look at the size of this hermit crab. This is massive. This is like the size of my fist. Huge, but here comes the uh, the following smug. So sand has caught up with me now. Check out this. Loads of smaller snails feeding on old dead crab. By the looks of it. Is that the same shark again? Very spooked that one, doesn't want to come next to me. Probably is the same shark. Finally a bit of rock and a bit of reef that we can look at. So it's been a proper desert at the moment. You can see now all the tego, all the weeds starting to um, rot away. So, oh look at this. You can tell what that is? It's well hidden. That's actually a cuttlefish, it's waiting to catch stuff. So they do this right up against the edge of reefs, so they wait for the small fish to come off the reef. It's full of sand. See if we can follow him. Oh, he's gone. Ah <laughs> he's crashed into the crashed into the rock there and let a little bit a little bit of ink out. Here have a headache. Some nice scallops here. See the seabed starting to change, it's getting a bit more shelly. Oh, what's that? Ah, grab that. Oh, that's an old one. That's a bit of uh, pottery, that. It's a bit of stoneware. So that's a blacking bottle. That's pretty cool. Try that in my bag, take that back to the surface. Someone's trash, another man's treasure. how many dead ormer shells there are here. There are only small ones as well. You can count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight shells of dead ormers. I think, and I'm, well, this is my hunch, I reckon octopuses are eating, eating these things. Look up beside against this reef. Those daily anemones? There's a few of them, they look pretty cool. It's probably the most I've ever seen in the same place. An issue we have when there's loads and loads of big waves above us is this happens to our rope. So it comes down, it almost makes like a, a noose that can catch around the top of your bowl. So you've got to be very careful. You've got to keep it, keep it tight if you can. Not so tight that it's lifting your arm up and down every five seconds.
This is the sort of seabed I like to scallop in. Very grainy, very gravelly. Some decent sized ones here as well. All the seaweed is starting to look like it's uh, about to die and fall away. So look at this. It's a sugar kelp. It's been eaten by a lot of stuff. It's the end of the summer so it's about time it died off. This is loads of prime location for flatfish. But I can't see any. Uh, I can hear the boat now. I think it's time we decided to go up. Still got loads of time left. And a hundred bar. But let's just go up anyway. Decent bag. Sort of. Ah, decent bag for me anyway. One of the big issues is when you're diving and you're filming, I'm looking at the dive through like a, or maybe a two inch by two and a half inch screen. So really when you're scalloping, you need to be looking for the next one before you're grabbing the other one. So I think that's, that's okay for me. I might just about cover the diesel bill. Oh well, there's the boat right above me. I think it's time to go up. I thought I was going to be the first one up. Looks like I'm the last. Paul and Matt are already on the boat. You two on the right. 141. Oh. Better sort mine out. Have I got 141? Maybe not. Like a blacking bottle. Whoa. Oh, that's nice. Oh, I got one there. Oh, that's nice. Chip out the bottom though. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Turn it around the bank the other way. Yeah, display it the other way around. Blacking bottle for uh, mass inks or making your shoes black. Too big to be an ink. It's nice. Yeah. Lovely shape. Yeah, it is nice. <laughs> he's always got two, eh? Hey? Hang on, he's back, he's going back. Ah, that's more like it. Watch out boys! There's a big wave chasing us. What would you say they are? About eight foot? Behind you? We're surfing it. Oh, that's bigger than the boat, that one! Whee! <laughs> so it's time to go back in. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Everything's sliding. Put that, put that there for safekeeping. Oh, yeah. How many did you get, Paul? 162. What was it? 142. 144. 142. Ah. Let's quick get mine before we get back. I got 100 in mine, but I'm on a 15. You done well. How many? How much you got left? 40 bar. That's not bad. Good lad. You didn't let it go below 30 bar. 30 bar. You potentially get moisture back in your tank. I only started with 60 bar. Huh? <laughs> I don't think that, I believe that. Let's get these gauged. I'm saying uh, a 35. So it ended up in the end, I had a whole crate of 90. That's one crate each. Yeah, one crate each. Nah, only joking, I only had 32. But look at this. What's that, some sort of oyster that's grown on there? I've never seen that before. You see slip limpets, but not them. What's that, Matt? 
It's like an oyster. No, I don't know if it is. Ask it Keeney. Like it's taken on the shape of the shell. Ask Keeney, I reckon that's some sort of oyster. What is it? Slip -limpet. Slip -limpet. Oh, it is a slip limpet. It's oh. taken on the shape of the shell. That's yeah, it has, eh? That's what you do when you stick on something. Weird, eh? Yeah, back in the arbor, that was too small. That's, um, you should kill that. That's yeah. an invasive species. Try and kill it then. <laughs> <laughs> it's still warm and I'm glad we're back in the harbour now because it's, uh, it's a lot less tossy and turny. Nah, one dive's enough. As you can see everything's all over the place, it's all dirty the deck now. Or was it like that before we got went out? <laughs> it's tidier. So all that rattling around has actually tidied it. Ah, I like it. Oh. Captain Keeney had to endure the surface then, while we got out the chaos into the calm. Like I did first, every time, I, every time my bag disappeared six to eight feet above me, I felt a bit bad. I heard the little nooses that come down. Not that bad, As your rope comes down, it nooses. That's what you want to... Uh, try and stop from getting caught around the top of your tanks and it's happened to me a couple of times you had to get all your gear off on the on the seabed anyway time to come back it's actually nice weather now thanks to Richard for taking us out thanks for coming along and I'll catch you on the next time See all these little iridescent pills? Those are her eyes. Hers, stroke his, because it's a male and female. Let's see if I can get it to snap close by wobbling my fingers.